G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now, the Schleswig Holstein, we'll just call it the Deutschland class battleship. Uh, it looks finished. <laughs> no, it's not. That is just a dry fit. There is no glue on that whatsoever. But I have dry fit together this 1935 version so that I can figure out how to replace the deck with the 1908 version, right? And then do a complete custom change of the secondary guns and where the lifeboats sit and the masts and the funnels and the bridge. All of that can be rebuilt from this kit and de-evolved back into the 1908 version. So let me show you what I'm on about. Some things remain the same. This rear funnel, that's the same. But I'm going to need to make two more of these, so I'm going to have to cast that. And that shouldn't be too hard. As I said, nothing is glued. Everything is just dry fit together. So I can cast those two halves, all right? And I can make myself two more funnels. That's possible. This funnel, well, depending which version I'm going to do, I could cut off the leg of it, slice it down the middle, reduce its width and narrow it. That's possible because depending which of the Deutschland ships I do, depends whether it has this high ring or it's just three funnels exactly like that one with the low ring. So the decision to be made there. The mast, well, the rear mast is about the same. It just has an extension on the top of it, which I can make out of brass wire and a little bit of scratch. That's not too difficult. Everything else pretty well remains the same. This part, which is not on the foremast for this one, those bits are in the kit and they're duplicated. So to make the foremast, I can do that. I can use those parts which are in the kit, but currently not being used. And I can put that little observation level on, extend this up much further. The, um, the spider web, or whatever you want to call it, the little cross there, that's the same on both versions, the same with the stern. So there's lots of parts I can use. This doesn't get used at all, but I could repurpose it elsewhere. This part, this upper level, which is just above the bridge, this little part here is the same, so I can reuse that, cut it away, but I don't need all of that. I certainly don't need that whole great big conflagration. I only need this little part. The actual bridge, it looks pretty snappy, doesn't it? But that bit is not used, at least not the way it is. The, um, the bit behind it is, so it sort of gets crunched up. I can do that. There's also a piece of photo which is supposed to go in here on this version, but on the 1908 version, it would be further back. So I can reuse that. That's looking good. There's certain little pieces here that are common to both, or I can reuse them and repurpose. So that's all looking good. Now, this part is no good at all. That's the deck, the upper deck for the um, 1935 version. So it goes. And I've marked here things that need to be removed because this comes in the kit. This is the upper deck for the 1908 version. So this was what got me thinking about the whole thing in the first place. I've got the deck and a lot of parts are similar. All right. So all I need to do is cut away from the superstructure here, cut away that office block and knock this down. All right. And then I will have exactly the same superstructure. Now some of the parts that are on here, such as these little boat supports here. Well, I can cut those off and pre-use them on, on the 1908. This whole section here, with the boat supports and all the rest of it, I can actually cut that off and put it in here when I remove. Because when I cut this out, okay, make this obvious, this part, right, when I cut that away, I'm going to have a big hole. So I can then actually reuse some of this, not all of it. I can use some of this under here, which will form that deck, which will be exactly what was there because there's the boat support. So that's exactly how it was. I'm going to have to do a little bit of a tidy up. And, but 
I can reuse things. This is the thing. There is some cutting out to do here. I've got to make some holes to put in more of the secondary armament. They go there. Then the tertiary armament, well, there's virtually none or very little on the 1935 version. But the 1908 version, there are quite a few. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, a dozen or so of the tertiary guns. And they are also in the kit because they give you three sprues of one kind. And so all the guns and all the, the, the turret assemblies and the shields, they're all there. So this is the thing. I had a look at this and thought, hmm, everything is sort of there. you just got to move it around a bit. It's like here, the um, this part, which is, I'll tell you what, the fit is so good. <laughs> Friction fit, and as you can see, it holds together very well. There are parts like this, which they're used in one place on the 1935 version, but I can reuse them again on the 1908. Same with these sort of things. A lot of these parts can be just moved around and reused. So I've got all the material I need to make a complete scratch change. Well, really, it's more like a jumble of parts moving to where I need them. The hardest bit is going to be hacking into this. Once that's done, everything else is just an assembly job, really. Just reusing parts and repurposing them where I want them and maybe adding a few masks. But here I've got to rip all this out, at least cut it down to the same, like to that deck level. Right. So that second deck there goes all the way back to there, where I've marked. I have just left that there as something that I'll need for support. But honestly, I'll probably have to just waste all of that to start with. But once I get my replacement deck in underneath, I can then build up with little boxes. And most of them are in the kit. And the ones that aren't, I'll just scratch. The beauty is, whatever I do under there is going to be hidden by the boats. So... It only needs to be functional with maybe a hint of some portholes and whatever. It just has to be very simple. So it's doable, very doable and not complicated. I'm going to have to make some funnels because I've only got one of the narrow one. So I'm going to use this blue stuff. Now you just can reuse it all the time. So I've done this before to make various parts we're missing. You need to heat it up, put it in this water and you've got to wait some time for it to dissolve. When it does, you end up with this sort of blob and it's very, very malleable. So you can squish that out until you've got a, uh, an area that you can then start to put your parts into. You can always pop it back in the water and re-squinch it and push it. It's very, very useful. Now, once you've got it to that stage, you can push in the part that you want to copy and build yourself a mould. Now, that mould then has to wait a while and cool down. I usually put it in the fridge so it really cools down and gets nice and solid. Then you've got something like this, and that will be a perfect mould for those parts. So we can pop the plastic parts out and we're ready now to start putting in some sort of medium which we're going to cast with. Now this time I'm going to use Tamiya UV reactive putty. I haven't used this before but I'm thinking it's sort of like a resin and it should flow nicely into all the tiny fine gaps. I did try this with Milliput but it really didn't work. Milliput I've used before to do small parts. You've got to really push it into all the little crevices and holes. And with this stuff, you've got to do it in small layers. And you've got to put it outside the sun to make it um, react and then go hard. But it's doable. And after a while, when it's all set and done, it's actually a lot faster than the milli part. You can get this done in like about half an hour. You have got a cast part. And it's not too bad. It's a bit furry, as to be expected from anything that's done this way. But basically... All the detail is there. It's not looking too bad at all. Just needs some cleanup. Well, that took me about half an hour or so to sand it all down and clean it up. But the two halves do seem to fit together nicely. So it's just a matter of getting out the old slow zap. Give it a squirt. And we should be able to basically super glue these two halves together. And we have a replica funnel. There we go. It's not looking too bad at all. Bit of alignment. Bit of jiggery and pokery, and there you go. That should be it. Oh, it's still sliding around. Don't get super glue on your hands, Harry. Oh, goodness me, you never learn. Yep, that's not looking too bad. A bit more jiggery and pokery, a bit more than I thought it needed. Yep. Now, another method is to actually scratch build. So we'll need to take some measurements. We need something that's going to end up with a seven millimeter diameter, but be an oval shape. So I can sort of squish this. Um, this is a little uh, stand tube to put aircraft in flight. 
and if I squish it down, I can get seven millimeters out of it. And surprise, surprise, it ended up being about the right length. But we need a height, 22 millimeters the height. Yep, that's what we're going to need. All right, so we'll just mark that on the cutting board with a nice sharp knife. But this stuff is too hard to really cut all the way through using your exacto knife. So it's a matter of putting it on a wood block and using one of my stiffer saws. These ones use a woodworking really. And that will cut through this stuff because it's um it's very hard. All right, that's not too bad. That's about the right height. Okay, bit of clean up, bit of um, sanding and cleaning out. Where to clean out the burrs? Yeah, go on, Harry, get your knife out. Here we go. We'll clean out the burrs. Yeah, riveting stuff, Harry. Come on, get on with it. Get on with it. Okay. Um, yep, that is not a bad replacement. We need some detail added, but that's a good start. Okay, we're going to work on the bottom now. That's a slightly bigger piece. So let's again have a look at our tube. About a 7.9, nearly an 8. We we'll measure this 8.1, nearly an 8. Ah, that's close enough. We should be able to sort of get away with this with a bit of putty and a bit of jig pokery. Height, we we'll need to know that. It needs to be about 12. Okay, 12's good. Yep, 12's good. All right, I'll use my miter this time because I really want to get some very, very precise straight edges. So we'll cut the end off this so I've got a nice clean bottom. So fixing that up to the miter. Away we go. I will cut that off and get a nice straight flat base. Anytime now, Harry. Anytime. Okay, now measure, 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 measure. Measure twice, cut once. Or in this case, measure three times and cut once. Because you can bugger things up completely if you don't get them right. Again, into the miter on that side, Harry, so we can all see what's going on. Yep. And I will cut a piece that will be just the right height for what I need to do. Okay, I need to split this in half because there's more magic to happen. So I found I can only do this by eye and on the board there. So cut that in half. That should give me two halves of a circle, which will be either end of this bottom piece. Okay, that's working. What I need to do now is figure out what is the full length. Well, I need, uh, what is it, about 11? Yeah, I need about 11. Okay, all right. Two millimeter thick styrene stock, and I need to make a piece that's going to fit in there. So... If they're eight in diameter, plus the two for that, that's only going to give me 10. I really need 11. So I'm probably going to need two of these and then sand them down a little bit. So anyhow, measuring up, making a few of these little pieces. This is going to be a spacer, a spacer between my two half circles. And that should give me the ovoid shape for the bottom. Now, this is a lot thicker styrene than the um, sort of stuff that you can easily just cut and snap. So it takes a bit of mucking around. All right, we've got those two little pieces roughly in there. And what I forgot to do was sand that one down to one millimeter, but don't worry about that. It all comes out in the washer to the end. Now it looks a bit rough, I know, but really once you've sort of got this together and the glue has set, you can cut it all down, sand it all up and fill in any gaps and it comes out not too bad at all. So, you know, there is method in my madness. All right, come on, get on with it, get on with it. All right, just test. Yep, it's about the rough size. It's actually a little bit too big, but um, for the purposes of this video, that's fine. Now, I need to make that ring in the middle. That's sort of the piece that's a bit tricky. It's a flangey sort of thing with a bit of a beveled edge. So I've got 0.5 millimeter styrene stock here, and I need to be one millimeter thick, so I've got to make two of them. It's much easier to work with this gauge of styrene because half a millimeter it's really easy to cut through but one little trick that you can do with plastic you may not know when you're doing this stuff is you don't always have to cut it through sometimes you can just run a couple of scores along a, uh, a line you want to cut and bend it and it just snaps perfectly smooth all right need to make the circles at the end now they need to be 10 but I'm going to use the 11 the reason is the pencil has a width so usually that adds an extra millimeter so you always go up one so now that gives me my little curves and that will be the shape I need to cut so that it'll match that funnel. Okay, to cut a curve, always cut outside of it and don't try and cut it all at once. Cut in ever decreasing little angles all the way along and that will give you the curve. Now, to get it perfectly smooth, you just sand it. And if you've got your pencil line there, you know what to work down to. So that will now give me that curve. What I'm going to do is do all of them all the way around and I end up with that. Yep, it's not bad. It'll need a little bit of fitting, and it does need to be beveled yet. I haven't beveled it in this video. But a test fit, and let's see what we've got. That fits on there, that fits on there. 
That's not bad. So I wonder how close that is to the actual funnel from the kit. Here's one I made before. <laughs> I'm getting there. It's looking pretty close. Now, a third method is to consider, well, that's the funnel that I want. That's the one that's supplied the kit, but it's far too wide for what I want to do. So I've got to get the top of it down to that width. Okay, all right. The bottom, well, it's all sort of a funny shape and it's not far off. I'll leave that for now. It's roughly about right. Worry about that later. And I'll need to chop that arm off. And I'll leave that arm for the moment because it's rather handy to hold this with to do all the fiddling. So let's see what the measurements are. That top at the moment is too big and it's 12.7. Okay, I've got to get it down to the smaller one size. So if we measure that, it is, come on, Harry, hurry up, 9.7. Yeah, 9.7, I've got to take three millimeters out of the middle of that funnel and it should be right. So just a matter of using my mitre and slicing through. And I've got my two little halves. And I just need to then sand those down to get the right size. Yep, that should work perfectly, Harry. Well, after a lot of sanding, cutting, filing, oh, a lot of work. I have some results. Now, modifying the wider first funnel, still got its leg on, I'm yet to cut that off. That was relatively easy. I only had to sort down the middle and then remove three millimeters and that uh, sanded down nice and smooth. And I'm pretty well there. That just needs a little more fine sanding. I need to take the leg off here, of course, and then I've got to build the bottom of it, but that probably will be easily done using the same material that I built the funnel over here. This is the original one, the, the second funnel, or the last funnel on the 1935 version, which is going to be my last funnel on the 1908, the conversion. The resin is pretty good, and I'm assuming this is resin. This is the Tamiya UV Reactive Putty, which is so much like resin by the time it's done, and it sands and looks and it tastes and it smells like resin. But you've got to be careful. There have been some disasters. The... Um, Milliput. Now normally that works really well, but I think this is too big a part. Maybe I should have done it in sort of two halves, like I did the resin one and glued it together. Because, um, yeah, it just, um, yuck. So I'll explore that further another time. Even the resin, I um, did do a better one for detail, much better detail with this one. But somehow sitting outside curing, it's got a heck of a warp on it. So. I don't know, I think you can do the hot water trick and try and take the warp out, but mm, too much work, too much work. This one is not too bad, this resin one. It's sanded down smoothly. It's reasonably straight up and down. A little bit of fettling there, I'll get the flute out the top of it. There's a bit of crumbliness here, just with handling I've lost a bit of that flange. Most of it's there, I should be able to putty that up, pretty well make it look reasonable. And I've got a few air bubbles as well. But they'll putty in and I'll cover them up. I've got some PE parts I can put over this to kind of disguise things. And as Guido said in his comments on Patreon, a little bit of smoke on the thing and you'll hide a whole ton of problems. Now, building absolutely from scratch using plastic, that shows some promise. Although it's fairly basic and I would probably do a better one the second time, I've come so close with that. The hardest thing is having something to actually make that ovoid shape. Well, actually, it's it's not so much ovoid as it's two circles and then there's a straight join. The repurposed acrylic stand tube sort of gets there. Amazingly, it's 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 about the right size. It's the right length and right width. But to get that, you know, oval shape, not ovoid shape. Yeah, um, not as easy. I've just basically got an egg shape and that's it. Again, a bit of smoke, a bit of confusion. I could probably you know, put some cotton wool out, so I've actually got some smoke coming out of the stack, and I could fake it, and you really would hide in those imperfections. But that was an easy way to make something. As I said, if I had two round um, stock tubes, I probably could buy that, and they were that correct diameter for the side, right? Then I could have then filled the side in, like I did down the bottom here. I used, that was a good method, I used two rounds and then I filled the middle in with stock and that gave me the shape. So the bottom is quite good, it's quite faithful, it matches up 
pretty much it's a pretty good match might be a tiny bit bigger but it's it's damn close it ended up being just a little bit bigger but it it's something I could get away with if I could cast better if I had better casting material maybe I need to invest in some proper resin don't know because my mold isn't bad but the more I've used my mold the weaker it's become it certainly seems to have got out of shape. Because this is UV reactive stuff that I'm putting in there, I put this out in the sun, and that's probably not the best idea with this um, you know, blue stuff because it needs warmth to soften it so that you can reuse it. So I'm kind of ruining my mold by putting it out in the sun. So that's the thing, I got a big blister there. So this, this mold is pretty well useless now. It um, seems to be out of shape. So anyhow, that's a whole video on me messing about with funnels. I've kind of got some results. What I really love is Mr. Mouse Muffins to take the dimensions of that one and produce three resin. <laughs> but I think my favours with Mr. Mouse Muffins have just about been exhausted. I've got him to make so many things. I don't know. Um, if you're out there, Craig, and you're feeling sorry for me, I can send you all the dimensions and details for this because I've measured it so many times. I don't mind adding the fine detail on it. You wouldn't have to do that. I just need an ovoid tube that size, that size, and a flange in the middle that's got a, um, a chamfered edge. So, um, you know, I'll file the chamfered edge on that one. Anyhow, that's the funnel thing, and I will get back to that, and I'll find the best solution. What I'll do in the next video, because basically I've spent this whole video just basically fiddling with my funnel, and that's not a euphemism. The next video I will chop out these sections, as I've discussed, and I'll start to get this together, which I think will actually be a far easier exercise than fiddling with funnels. All right, well, that's it. <laughs> I'm all worn out. I've fiddled with my funnel web, and I am done. <laughs> it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Udini. <laughs>